Hi, I'm Jonathan, founder and designer at Brother Max. The following interview is between Rachel Little, health editor of Mother and Baby and Practical Parenting magazines, and Dr. Hilary Jones, practicing GP and patron of Meningitis Research Foundation. They are discussing the diagnosis of meningitis in little ones. Meningitis means there's an inflammation of the meninges, which are the covering membranes of the brain and spinal cord. Uh, and it's this inflammation which leads to the symptoms of meningitis. In an adult, the symptoms are often very classic. A very severe headache, a high fever, uh, neck stiffness, a dislike of bright lights, nausea and vomiting. Those are the classic symptoms. There may be some of them, there will rarely be all of those symptoms. Uh, and if you're unlucky enough to develop the septicemic form of meningitis, where there's blood poisoning, you'll often see a, a dark red, purpley rash uh, in the skin, uh, which doesn't blanch if you press a glass tumbler against it. Uh, and if you see that sign, it's a very important sign to get yourself uh, to hospital ASAP, because in that situation, minutes count. In babies and toddlers, the symptoms may be more subtle. What you're looking for in a baby uh, is uh, a baby who is off feeds, uh, who is maybe vomiting, uh, whose soft spot on the top of the head is bulging or feeling tense, a baby whose skin has become blotchy, whose cry has become shrill and high-pitched, a baby that you don't recognise as connecting with you as a mother or a father. Uh, perhaps they're staring into space, perhaps they're drowsy, and their conscious level is falling. I think if you see any of those signs and uh, confirm that there's a temperature as well, those are important signs not to ignore. Uh, and uh, it's a sign to get further advice immediately uh, and possibly to be even more proactive and take your baby to hospital straight away. These days we have some very good vaccines for meningitis, but we can't vaccinate against all forms of meningitis. We've got a very successful vaccine in HIV and uh, also a vaccine that protects against uh, meningococcal meningitis type C. And we give these as part of the routine immunization uh, program. But we haven't yet cracked um, a vaccine for meningococcal type B, and that's the one that we see most uh, uh, disability and death from uh, currently. So whilst we don't have vaccines to cover every type of meningitis and prevent it, it's important that parents remain vigilant and continue to look for the signs and symptoms. And if they want to um, learn what they are by contacting the Meningitis Research Foundation who can send out inf information sheets, cards to carry in purses or wallets or stick to the front of your fridge at home so you never miss those early warning signs which is so important not to miss. In the early stages, there's very little to tell between meningitis and flu. If you think about it, um, a sufferer of either of those conditions will feel a malaise, um, fatigue, lassitude, be off colour, perhaps uh, be off their, their food. They may be nauseous or even vomit. They'll certainly have a headache. And it's as the disease progresses that the classic symptoms evolve. So neck stiffness, for example, is, is going to evolve with meningitis um, uh, and dislike of bright lights is a classic, typical feature of meningitis. Whereas with flu, it becomes more of a respiratory condition with sore throat, dry cough um, and uh, perhaps breathlessness. So in the early stages, they're very similar which is why many parents mistake the diagnosis and why sometimes in the early stages doctors do as well. Meningitis is an illness which progresses terrifyingly fast sometimes. It's not at all unheard of for a baby or a toddler or an adult um, to be right as rain at 8 o'clock in the morning and extremely ill um, by uh, the evening. So minutes count. Uh, the symptoms as they progress should be carefully monitored and if someone even suspects that it might be meningitis they need to, to get help very quickly indeed. We have to remember that children become poorly all the time. 
Uh, I know as my children grew up, there was always something and they're likely to become poorly maybe four or five times a year, sometimes more than that, as they're exposed to more and more viruses. But how do we know whether their infection is just an ear infection, a short-lived tonsillitis, or something more serious, a respiratory infection caused by flu, or even something very significant like the onset of meningitis. It's sometimes very difficult to know. So all we can do is to keep an eye on what's happening, how the condition is progressing. Uh, and I think the versatility of a three-in-one thermometer like the one made by Brother Max offers a fantastic opportunity for parents to check on the core temperature and get an accurate reading and keep an eye on it. And when you bear in mind that it combines the opportunity to take a, a forehead reading using the scanner and getting an accurate reading there and check on the ambient temperature of the room in which the child is, I think you know, you've got a, a very reassuring device there that you're going to use a lot as a parent whilst your child is growing up.